What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video and today we have a quick first welding project or something I think would be good to get started in welding and fabrication in your shop. If you're looking for a little project to do, I think I have one here and that is going to be a welding third hand. I've never actually built one of these so this is going to be a first for me, maybe for you too. Um, I've always just found little things around my table to prop up when I needed to weld something. That's really what they're for. If you need like a little extra finger to hold something while you get it tacked or welded. Um, but I've always either had fixtures for stuff or I would just find something. So I'm excited to get one of these built for me and hopefully you are too. This project contains a little bit of welding, a little bit of bending, a little bit of grinding, and a little bit of drilling. So really just a little bit of a lot of the basics. Um, here I just have some bar steel. I got a inch and a quarter hot roll bar here. That's a little over 38 millimeters. This is an inch and a quarter brass bar, which is just a little over 31, about 0.75 millimeters. And this is 916 cold rolled bar, which is just over 14 millimeters. Let me know if you like the millimeters. I know there's a lot of people in other countries watching and I don't know, I just figured it was a little something I could add to help people out so they don't have to do their own conversions. The type of metal you get is not actually that important. Um, the basic principles are you need something for it to roll on. I actually think we're gonna use this for the back piece. So that'll let it rock. We're gonna use a little bit of this for the counterweight to put some pressure on it. And this is gonna be our actual finger. But whatever you use, not really that important. You could really make one of these out of anything. You could get really creative with it. Before we get started, just wanted to say this video is brought to you by Everlast. Today we are going to be using the Power Arc 161. The Power Arc 161 is a digitally controlled DC stick and TIG welding machine with plenty of features and a well-priced package. It has stick welding features like a voltage reduction device and anti-electrode stick, and for TIG welding it offers high frequency start, live lift start, two-step and four-step switch operation, and a simple to use adjustable pulse setting. If you are interested in an Everlast welder and would like to receive a free Nova foot pedal and torch, head on over to everlastwelders.com and use promo code VOSS at checkout. All right, starting off, we have to figure out how big we're gonna make our third hand. Since this is gonna be the actual length of how far it can reach, I'm thinking I'd probably want to be able to weld something a little bit taller than this. So maybe like come up about this high, bend over. I'm gonna go with 10 inches. So that's 10 inches on our actual finger. This is gonna be the bar that actually supports the base. I think we're gonna make that, we'll do it four inches for this one since this is kind of relatively big. And then this is going to be our counterweight. I think I'm gonna have this pass right through this. So since that's four inches, we want it a little bit narrower, make it two inches. So in metric, we're just a little over 25 centimeters, a little over 10 centimeters, and a little over five centimeters in length on all these bars. All right, here's all of our little pieces. This is one of those projects you just kind of make do with what you have. I'm lucky enough to have the horizontal bandsaw to help cut these pieces out, but uh, I do not have a drill press and I do not have a lathe. A lathe, you could really make some nice looking parts to go with this, and a drill press would help us out with what we're about to do, which is drill the 916 hole into here just so we can like set this in a little bit, and then we're actually going to weld that or fuse that on there with some Blue Demon silicon bronze, and then we are going to drill a 916 hole all the way through our counterweight, which is gonna slide over the shaft, and then we are gonna weld that on with some Blue Demon ER312.
right, we have all of our elements. Uh, hole ended up pretty straight, the, uh, but a little off to one side. Maybe when I clean it up, it'll kind of balance out a little bit. Uh, that, that lathe I was talking about earlier would be perfect for cleaning up these edges, making it look real nice. Spinning the mill scale off of here, that's all stuff I'm gonna have to do by hand coming up. Same with the brass piece. Next, we are going to taper the end of the finger and pick a spot here, heat it up, bend it with a torch, and get the uh, angle we want so it can reach up and over and hold our parts down. So let's do that right now. Okay, if you're wondering what I did there, I just kind of shaped these how I wanted, took all the big scratches out of them with a 50 grit three inch pad, and then I hit them again with a Scotch-Brite medium, that's the red color on the three inch. And then at the end, I hit them with a Scotch-Brite medium hand pad, just to kind of smooth them out, make them look uniform. And then now I'm wiping them off, making sure they're clean with acetone. At this point, finger oils really don't seem to affect welds for me. I try not to touch exactly where I'm gonna be welding, but you can always go back and wipe off any fingerprints that show up after you're completely done. It's not really gonna matter. This is gonna get scratched up pretty good being on the welding table and used as a tool. You could polish these up even more if you had finer grits, but uh, like I said, it's gonna get banged up. But I just wanted to make it look as good as I could for now, you know, get a good Instagram photo out of it. And yeah, so let's get these cleaned off and we will get them welded together. Okay, now I'm gonna fire up the Everlast power arc. Right now I have it plugged into 240 volts. Uh, I'm gonna do a full overview of this welder in a future video, but for now we are going to set it in four step mode. Since this welder does not come standard with a pedal, we are going to be using the torch switch. And I'm going to be welding the counterweight onto the actual 9 16th solid bar finger. So I think we're gonna need decent amperage here. I'm gonna start off with 140. All right, to get going here, we're going to weld the counterweight onto the actual finger. Somewhere probably up here. You can hook a foot pedal up to this welder, but I don't have one. So we are gonna be using the torch control, like I said. It's an on off switch, push it down, brings up the low base amps, release it, we're at full amperage, push it down again and hold it, we're back at the low amperage and then release it and it cuts off. So that's how we're gonna be welding this uh, entire thing up. I'm gonna up my amps to 160.
All right, now we have the counterweight welded to the finger. Since we are going to be welding some mild steel to a piece of brass, we are gonna be using some silicon bronze. And you're not actually welding, you're more like melting the silicon bronze around it. And since we have this pocket here and we're gonna go all the way around, it should be a pretty strong hold. Now, if you thought the welder sounded a little funny when we were welding the counterweight on, it's because the pulse setting was actually turned on, but it's at 250 cycles per second, so you barely even notice it. To weld on the brass end, I'm gonna turn that down to 0.4 cycles a second. A uh, cool thing about this welder is if you turn this knob, it goes in small increments, and if you push it in, it goes in the larger increments. So it makes adjusting a lot faster. Okay, it's not the prettiest. Uh, two, whenever you're welding brass, you're gonna wanna wear some kind of respirator. I don't know if this is sufficient, but it's gotta be better than nothing. Brass contains zinc, uh, but stuff you don't wanna breathe in. So wear a respirator, best one you have. Proper ventilation, I'm in a big room here. Um, I need a lot more practice when using silicon bronze. 332nd was too big. It made too big of a ball. It was really hard to get it to lay down. I did end up preheating the piece of brass a little bit. I know you don't melt the base materials, but it did seem to help it want to jump down to it because it just kept trying to jump to the steel. Uh, a, lot, a lot of things to learn from this. I don't have a lot of experience with brazing with silicon bronze. So if you are gonna build one of these and you wanna keep it simple for yourself, go ahead and make that out of steel. That way you can just weld both of them. But uh, the brass does look really nice. Hey, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this little third hand turned out. I'll show you the braze weld, even though I didn't show you any arc shots. Uh, the 332nd ended up being a little fat. The, uh, the steel welds turned out, you know, as they should, since that's kind of what we're used to doing. But uh, I would like to learn more about uh, silicon bronze brazing. Don't have a lot of experience at it, never had to, but I've seen a lot of cool work out there that uses it. I really like the color it produces and uh, being able to use brass in some of our stuff coming up will be definitely beneficial if we can get it figured out. Thanks again to Everlast Welders for sponsoring this video. The power arc handled everything we threw at it, even welding this solid bar. One more thing I wanted to mention, YouTube has a new feature allowing people to join a channel as a member. Um, I've actually turned that on. There's been a few people who've asked how to support the channel if I was gonna start a Patreon. It always felt weird to me, but now that YouTube has this feature, I went ahead and enabled it. It does offer a lot of benefits. Everyone who joins the Dime Crew, I bet you didn't know you were gonna be called that, those of you who have already signed up somehow before I even announced this. Um, there are going to be member-only posts in the community tab. I'm gonna start doing some live streaming on YouTube, some welding projects, uh, TIG welding art, things like that. If you cannot catch the live stream and you miss it, the archive is gonna be available for Dime Crew members only. Uh, another cool thing is you'll get a badge beside your name down in the comments as well as the live stream chat and it'll show like how long you've been a member, things like that, to show that you are a member and you're a channel supporter. You'll get some custom emotes that I've made that I'm going to update as they come along and any other benefits I think of along the way will be added to that. So if you are interested in that, you can click the join button down below. There's also a link in the description. If you can't, don't want to, not interested, I just appreciate you watching when it really comes down to it. And before you head out, you can click this video up here. This is what YouTube thinks you might be interested in. And that's it for this video. I'm Justin Voss. I'll see you guys next time.